like to welcome you, Internet Congregation, Chilliquin Congregation. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> It's always cool. I'll kind of watch the front end. And I'm like, man, there, there's so much power when you hear that clapping and, and just greeting people as they come in to watch through the Internet. You know, the last three weeks, um, we've kind of done like a root canal in the Bible. We kind of gotten in and drilled down and taken some bad stuff out. So if you haven't listened to the last three weeks of messages... They're on our YouTube channel at Last Days Harvest Ministries YouTube. And um, we've been talking about being warriors of light as darkness begins to cover the earth. And then Isaiah said, deep darkness will cover individual people. That's right. You're actually going to be watching people just oppression coming on them. Yeah. You'll just, James will be standing there looking at this person and We'll just be seeing them wilt right in front of our eyes and they don't even know why. And that's where you got to be really careful in the end times dealing with somebody that's blind. Because a lot of times you're going to be trying to say something practical and their life is impractical. And even though everything that you're telling them is true, it won't register. And we've learned that through spiritual warfare, even Paul said, when I want to do good, evil is right there with me. In my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law waging war against my mind, making me a prisoner to sin. And even though we're Christians, we're not bulletproof. The enemy is watching and studying to make us a prisoner in our mind. Has your mind ever just been exhausted? Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, you know, and we try to lay down at night and you can't even shut your mind off. So be very careful when you're dealing with people because they're going through that maybe 10 times higher. And we have a tendency to really get frustrated with people and it takes our joy away. Yeah. And then instead of being an asset to them, we're a problem. Mm -hmm. Instead of being part of the solution, we become part of the problem because we become emotionally upset with the person. You understand that? All right. So the one who stands firm till the end will be saved. And so we're going to go look at Matthew 24, 10 through 14. Now, I want to teach you tonight because it's very important in the last days to remain standing. Because life is going to try to pull you down, knock you down. So Matthew 24, verses 10 through 14. Matthew 24, 10 through 14. You might say, Randy, we got it. You keep repeating it. Well, you need to realize there's a lot of people, hundreds of people this week that have never read the Bible, that have never even been in a church and they're sitting there maybe with another cell phone or another computer looking up that scripture for the first time. Yeah. And uh, so I try to really not rush. Matthew 24, 10 through 14. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And you might say, Randy, at what time is that? The Bible says there will be great pestilence. Uncontrollable diseases. Diseases that will actually shut down nations. And people might even have to wear masks. <laughs> are, we in, are we in the realm of that at all? Right. Okay. 
You might say, well, Red, this is down the road. No, this is now. Yeah. So what you need to realize is when birth pains come upon a nation or individual, it creates tension. Mm -hmm. It creates tension. So you always got to be very careful when tension comes upon a nation. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. I'm going to break this down as we go on here, but be very careful with your anger. Well, be careful with it, Rand. Yes, you are going to get angry. Mm -hmm. None of us are perfect, but you've really got to take a moment. I, Melody won't care if I share this. I'll just generalize it, but she went to the bank and had a check Everything was cool. She went in to put the check and Lady goes, no, no, you, you, something was, I'm not going to go into the details of it. But immediately something rose up in Melody. Sweet little kind, <laughs> silver haired, silver walker Melody. <laughs> and this is what she heard. She goes, Randy, I heard your voice. Are you going to react? Or are you going to respond? Yeah. So the last three weeks prepared Melody to get her nose bloodied. Yeah. At an angelic bank where all the tellers are happy. Right. <laughs> you can laugh. I'm being funny. But see, we've got to really guard ourselves because anger is one of the big things in the end times that'll cause you to turn away from your faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false teachers will appear, says prophets, but that can also mean ministers, will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. One who stands firm till the end will be saved. So we're going to break this down. Keys to standing firm. Randy, what causes me to turn away from faith in Jesus? So let's tear this word apart. Betrayal. Have any of you ever been betrayed? You don't have to raise your hands because it's everybody in here. Somebody, yeah, some people are going to raise both hands and one leg, yeah. you know, and it's not howdy duty time. I just dated myself. Uh, keys to standing firm. Randy, what causes me to turn away from faith in Jesus? Betrayal. To betray someone is to expose a person by giving information, gossip. This this will this will crush you as a believer. Well, Randy, I was just in the room and they were talking. I've been teaching you. If somebody starts pulling their garbage truck into your yard, beep 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 yeah. beep beep, and you you hear it start sliding, you better start running. You got to be very careful when you allow people to dump their trash in your yard. Yep. See, I'm very guarded when people come and sit down and go, hey, Randy, I need to talk to you about this person. And then that conversation starts going in direction. I don't even know this person. Yep. Lord, I've never even met them personally. And I got to be very careful because if I allow all this information to go in, then I'm going to form an opinion, Randy, about somebody I never met. Yeah. So even for me, if I've got an issue with someone, I don't call up Billy Joe Bob and say, hey, this person really rubbed me the wrong way. First, I go to the Lord, Kelly, and then I go to them personally. 
This is what's destroying the lukewarm church, John, Deb. Is these conversations about people that cause betrayal. Exposing a person by giving information. Be very careful who you confide in. Or you'll get to a place and go, I just don't like people. Are, can we be serious tonight? And really why we say that is because of betrayal. A wound. And then what happens, Hannah, is I've always got my guard up. And if you've always got your guard up, don't be naive, be discerning. You'll always be critical of people because you'll be waiting and watching for the mistake. And it's very hard for me, James, to love people unconditionally. I'm watching you! <laughs> Scared you guys, didn't I? <laughs> I? I've seen this before. And you're just like them. And the finger comes out. Yeah, we start pointing. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. All of society, every place you go, is extreme pressure right now and heavy darkness over people. You got to start thinking about smiling. Relax your body a little bit. You know, I work on bodies all week long. My hands on body, training people. You got to learn to relax. <clears throat> Keys to standing firm. Randy, what causes me to turn away from the faith in Jesus? Betrayal. <laughs> now, the second big word there was hate. The definition of hate is anger. We've got to be very careful in the end times. Darkness is coming. Gossip is happening. And you can just casually bump into somebody, not even in their realm of influence or anything, and all of a sudden they can go off on you. Are you going to respond or are you going to react? The definition of hate, remember, they're going to betray and hate each other. And this is talking about Christians. This isn't talking about the world. As the birth pains come, wars, rumors of wars, rioting, earthquakes, pestilence, hate, anger, or resentment. Resentful emotions, which can be used against people. In the end times, and that's if the Lord tarries 20 years, you can see the tension in our government, in society. Be very careful with your words. I've never wanted to be more of a quiet person than now. I'm, I'm really learning to just listen and really weigh my words when I'm speaking to somebody. And then back to somebody dumping their trash in your yard, John, Carol. Th these conversations, you got to be real careful because you'll sit there for an hour and you'll take all that stuff in. And Randy, it pushes us down. And it can invade your house. It can invade your home. It can invade your temple. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So hate creates emotion which can be used against people. And then it said here, the love of most will grow cold. Love for others must remain hot. 
even complete strangers, even as I go throughout my day and I'm all over the place, in home, at the gym, everywhere, working with people, I've really got to change my focus to loving people like Jesus loves me. I can't love you out of my history. Messed up. This guy, messed up. From a wee lad, messed up bad. So James, if I try to love people out of my experience, no bueno. I, I got nothing for you, man except scars and injury and rejection and abuse and violence. It, it's just not going to work. So all of a sudden the Lord goes, Randy, I want you to love James the way I love you. You want me to love him unconditionally? Yes. Well, I can't do that, Lord. You're right, but I can through you. Yeah. See, once I realize I don't have to love people in my own strength, that takes the pressure off. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is stay standing, stand firm, and love. Yeah. But once I get angry, Lauren, once I start reacting, guess what I do? I turn to Jesus and say, your blood's not enough. Your sacrifice is not enough. What you did on the cross is not enough. I'm going to do what my little temper tantrum wants to do. And I'm going to pick up my jacks and my ball. And I'm going to go over here. None of you, of course. This will help you. Like I said, we've done, we've, we've drilled the tooth out the last three weeks. We pulled out all the nerve endings, watched the, watched the videos, and now one of my clients is an oral surgeon, so I made sure, as I'm doing these root canals on people on Tiliquin, man, he said, I said, is it called packing? He goes, yeah, Bran, you're starting to pack the tooth before you put a crown on. So tonight's packing. We've actually pulled all the bad stuff out. Now we're packing in love. So love for others must remain hot. So let's go to John 15, 9 through 12. And I'm going to give you some scriptures here to make this legal. So John 15, 9 through 12. I was, uh, Bernie and I were talking this week. I told Bernie, I said, can you imagine if all we did was just love people? It's, it's too easy. It, it is too easy. When I get up in the morning, all I got to do is love people. Well, Randy, what if somebody attacks you or this, that, and there? Let me give you 20 bucks or a Snickers. You don't look good when you don't have a Snickers. <laughs> but you know what, Lauren? All those millennials watching this, they go, that guy just taught a parable that I saw on TV. <laughs> That's right. Matthew 15, 9 through 12. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. John 15, 9 through 12. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. See, that's important, remaining in love. If Jesus keeps stressing, Sean, that I got, we got to remain, that means we can leave. See, we have a free will. Yeah, yeah. Another great movie, Free Willy. <laughs> <laughs> See, Lauren and I, I'm going to chat him tonight. He's like, Randy, too much TV. See, they're already coming for me. And here's a silence. I have told you this so my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is love each other as I have loved you. 
Cakewalk, man. Easy peasy. Hannah, all we got to do, love people the way Jesus loves us. No problem. Remember, when you come under attack, decrease. I'm not saying let people walk over you, but step back. Take a time out. Listen and think about your response. No knee-jerk reaction. Because any of you can go from zero to 60 like that. But if you take that 30 seconds, James, to listen, you say, I'm not biting on this hook again, man. I've been in this rodeo, and I got bucked off last time. Ain't going, all right? So let's go to Ephesians. This is what we've been teaching out of for three weeks. This is a month now. Yeah. Um, yeah, a month already. Where does time go? So let's go to Ephesians 6, 10 through 14. And now we're going to start in the next few weeks getting into the armor of God. So if God's saying you need to wear armor, that means something's coming towards you. If God's saying you need to wear armor, that means there's something out there that don't like you because you look like Jesus. Amen. Let me see if I can find Ephesians in this Bible. All right. I thought I might have tore it out, but it's in here. Ephesians 6. I keep flipping to Philippians, though. Ephesians. Yeah, I know, I'm there. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 10 through 14. Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So we need to remain standing. We need to have armor on. And we, know, we need to know that the enemy has a plan and a purpose to get us down. We got to remain standing. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Whenever you get angry at an individual or you allow an individual to make you angry, it's not that person. It's not flesh and blood, it, it's just business. You, you got to be very, very careful. Because if we could sit and watch that person that's winding you up, if we could see their life, it's probably carnage. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, there's probably just, Randy, so much stuff going on, and now we've jumped into their dance. Mm -hmm. And actually, people love to watch you lose control because they take your power. Yeah. I've had people all of my life the more quiet I get, the more angry they get. But if, if I react, told you I could get you. Yeah. Ain't gonna happen, man. Ain't gonna happen. Yeah, good word. I had a guy one time, uh, a pastor ripped me apart for about a half hour in front of another pastor because about 700 people came forward in an altar call at his church. You get in trouble because 700 people come forward after you preach. This is stuff you're not supposed to talk about in church. <laughs> But I'm going to use it as an example, not to belittle these two ministers, but a spirit of jealousy came on him because a lot of his leaders came forward and people he had trained, Nick. So for 30 minutes, this guy with a friend of mine takes me apart and he agrees with him. 
And so at the end, he said, you got anything to say? And this is what I said. I said, are you done? He goes, I'm done. I said, well, I'm, I'm out of here. He goes, Randy, if somebody would have done to me what I just did to you for the last half hour, I would have ripped them to shreds. And Lauren, I stood up and I said, I am not you. And I left. See, many of us, I've got to defend myself. I've got to have justice. I am justified in protecting myself. No, you're not. You will lose every time. It crushed both of those guys. That wasn't my purpose. That's between them and God. But I am not you. Some of you in the next few weeks, you're going to be in a situation where it's unjustified. It's unjustified. And you're going to stick your chest out, pull your shoulders back and go, hey, I, I, can, I can swing back. No. That's what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Now that wasn't in my notes. It's free because I like it. <laughs> All right. Now I got to run fast. <laughs> For our struggle <clears throat> is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Be very careful when people get jealous of you. Well, why are they jealous of you, man? Because they don't like themselves. And any time you're happy, it makes them angry. Be very careful when you have a success or something good happens and then here's this little chirping. You know what I do when anybody, James, comes to me and says something good? Awesome! I'm excited! I'm excited for him. Yes. Yep. Therefore, verse 13, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth around your waist. Standing firm with truth buckled around your waist. So I'm almost done. But I'm going to give you two sets of scripture text. Well, one has one verse and the other has two. That wouldn't be text. So let's go to 1 John 4, 7 through 8. Randy what is truth? There's a lot of lying going on everywhere. And maybe some person has even lied about you once in a while. People are going to lie about you. People are going to betray you. People are going to hate you. But we can't. I love James. James, man. I, I could just sit here and talk to James all night long. He might never come back and say, Randy's embarrassing me, but he will. But James, if we are consumed with what other people think about us, it can destroy us. Because yeah. yes. you start seeking the approval of people instead of the approval of God. Because God loves me. Amen. Scars and all. Amen. Sean. I don't have to impress anybody. I just have to please my heavenly Father. First John. Now this isn't the Gospel of John. This is First John. It's not Second John. Okay. And it's not Third John. It's First John, four, seven through eight. 
Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Ouch, ouch. They will betray and hate each other and turn from the faith. What that's telling me, Randy, is they've already don't really know God. That's right. They have a knowledge of God, Lauren, but they deny the power, and the power, James, is in the love. Yeah. End of story. That's what keeps your armor on. That's what keeps you protected, is the truth is love. It's, you know, and if you study armor and as Paul's chained in these Roman prisons and looking at these Romans probably daily and looking at their armor, that's what cinches everything together. Yeah. You know, that breastplate comes down, everything comes up, it, it just cinches you. Truth, belt, amen? Yeah. Remember, when you start to get angry, when you start to gossip, you start to slander, you start to listen to conversations about other people, God is love. Is this conversation helping me to love this person or criticize them? John? You know? You got to be very careful what you're taking in. You already got enough problems all by yourself. <laughs> Not. Sam will do counseling for the whole congregation for the next 12 months. Bless you, my son. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Sam. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So let's go ahead and we'll wrap this up and put a bow on it. Let's go back to the Gospel of John. <clears throat> you know, as I was working on this message this week, I, I was just sitting there thinking, God, you've made it too easy. You give us armor, we can protect ourselves. You give us the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit to fight spiritual beings. But it all boils down to love. God's mercy is new every morning. Before I even open my eyes and get out of bed, I've conditioned myself now, Lord, help me walk in your mercy today. Deb, it's so ingrained in me now, my, my eyes are not even open yet, Patricia. I haven't even opened my eyes yet. I'm awake, but Randy, I'm conditioning myself because the world's violent, man. I mean, the world is violent. The kingdom of God suffers violence. And the other night I said, I'm full of violence. The violence is to love hot, to walk in mercy. That's the violence against the world is the opposite, is to love. That's the fire of the Holy Spirit inside of you is the fire of God's love, Sarah. Sarah, you work at a bank. You see it all day long. You see all that stress all day long. John 14, 6. Almost done. Gospel of John. Same John that wrote 1 John. Same John, James, that got dipped in oil, boiling oil, this is in historical documents because they couldn't kill the guy. And then they exiled him to Patmos and he gets the biggest revelation of the Bible, the book of Revelation. Remember, sometimes you're going to need to get burned to get revelation.
John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is truth. Why every single day of the week now, because we're going to pray here with these online, why are people praying to receive Christ, Randy, every single day? Off of Facebook. Truth. They're looking for truth, and you know what it is? They need to be loved. Yes. They need to be loved. This is going to help you guys this week. So let's pray with these online. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. You'll be saved. And that's what we're going to pray with you right now here online. You could be in Thailand. You could be in Mongolia. What you need to know is God loves the world. God loves all of you, and right now you need that love. And so as we pray this prayer, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. Even in the book of Acts, it said they'll just call on the name of Jesus in the end times, and they'll be saved. Yeah, true. So let's pray this prayer with these over the internet. So just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. I believe. I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross and that you died and, that you died and paid for my sins. Paid for my sins. Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that, you rose again that you rose again on the third day. On the third day. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you, I ask you into, my into my heart as my Lord, as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with us, put that heart emoji on the Facebook page. Contact us. We know you have a Bible. We know you can watch more of the teaching. But if you need anything, just Facebook or YouTube. Love you guys. See you next week.